Hi everyone. Good evening or good afternoon. Thank you for coming to RA Frame for this um, jolly session with um, Bill Cox and also in the home. But first of all, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land, the Pijigou and Gadigal people, and pay respect to the elders past, present, and emerging. So, a lot of architects actually, deep down inside, they really want to be artists, <laughs> but somehow they think that, okay, we probably need to make a living, so we better be architects first, and then they become artists. But all along, they've been you know, practicing their, their art all the way through their career, and finally, when they get a chance, they um, exhibit. So, I think um, when we first started the gallery, we actually had um, three exhibitions of architects drawing. It's called um, Drawn by Design, the Art of Architecture. It's a biennial exhibition, and um, both Philip and David were very much part of that. Um, and um, they did it three times with us. Um, since then, Philip have decided that he will become a full-time artist. And uh, <laughs> 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 well, I think he, he practiced architecture as art. <laughs> but we won't tell his office about that. Um, yeah, and um, so Philip actually had an exhibition here, so the exhibition here three years ago. And now David decided to do exactly the same thing. And um, he's also going to be one of our artists experiencing with us. So we're very much looking forward to it. In fact, among our artists, we have six architects who are, who were sort of, or are still architects. And um, so, I mean, they, they are really very good artists. Um, I mean, some of the people who buy the work, um, Philip in his last exhibition included um, the mayor, Lord Mayor Thurman Moore, and um, David in one of his um, drawing exhibition, one of his works was purchased by Adam K. Mon, the former director of um, Art and New South Wales. So uh, it's testament to that, the fact that they really do fantastic work. But it comes back to the question why do ar architects like art so much that they want to be artists as well? So maybe to answer that question, I'll hand the microphone to um, David to continue that conversation. You can welcome Philip Cox and David Home. Thank you, Simon. That's very kind of you. And we've enjoyed mm -hmm. visiting with you on and off over the years, as you pointed out. I, too, would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of this country. It's interesting because we are going to talk a lot about the country, only for a short period of time, as I'm reminded by Philip. What's interesting is that in this room are uh, works that depict, to the best of our abilities, the Ewan Nation of the Great South Coast, um, the Wiradjuri people of the uh, Western Plains of New South Wales, and then land around Jerome and the Great River to the north of Sydney, the Hawkesbury. And so it's been our intent and my role here is to sort of frame this for you as a, a discussion about landscape. And one of the things that Philip and I talk about in that idea of a land that was never ceded is how do we as creatives interpret that. And so when you look back at the originals that came here uh, 250 years ago, with their European eyes, they were looking at a landscape that had never been seen through those European lenses before. So the quality of the light, the nature of the color was something that has occupied, and you can see the early works have a naivety in one sense. There's been an evolution through the 20th century through, through greats such as into the contemporary days, uh, you know, whiteness, etc. that sort of look at the way the colour and form is depicted through some of the great, uh, you know, sort of the great robes buried, some of those examples as well, which I've summarily stolen as an idea. In my work as well, Bill's done the same thing. So we're interested in that idea of probing and looking at the Australian landscape in its variety and how we interpret that, that, that as, as creative. So I'm just going to pose a couple of questions this afternoon and you're going to ask me back the questions. What's your opinion? So, Philip, why do you paint? <laughs> <laughs> I suppose I paint because of, um, I'm not a painter. I, I'm, I'm, as an architect, I've always been um, looking at landscapes. I've been intrigued by you know, the theories of 
Jimmy is lately, I've been seeing the, the spirit of what the landscape is all about. And I suppose in art, you're able to express spirit and place, where in other media, it's very, very difficult to do that. So the paintings that you see around the David and mine really reflect how we see the landscape through our eyes. And it's interesting when you see, you know, Fred Williams or John Olson or other people, or Michael Johnson, looking at the landscape, they interpret it through their eyes, and that is the intrigue of that. And I would <clears throat> pose the question to David, how does he react to that? One of the things that I've been fascinated by as an architect, and I think you can use it to your benefit, is in my line drawings, is to try and uh, distort perspective and to adjust perspective. And I guess one of my painting heroes is great, David Hockney, and so you know his work is actually trying to unframe, unpack the landscape perspective as well, to flatten the landscape. So for mine, when I do line drawings, I certainly try to distort those. I think some of my architects might even have that in them as well. And then with painting, I'm intrigued again by the idea of flattening landscapes to hopefully increase the understanding of the essence of the painting itself. My next question to you is, before you continue, uh, is with this great body of work that you've done here, Philip, what is next for you? Well, I don't know. Death, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> My age would be a much to look forward to. No, <laughs> uh, the, um, I, I think it's being able to interpret uh, what you see in, in a uh, very new way. I mean, it, the older you get, <clears throat> your perceptions change. I think that <clears throat> you perhaps see things clearer because your eyes become, you know, blurred by the, the, the unnecessary and you see the essence of what what landscapes are all about. But I think that happened to Lloyd Green as well. The, the more he became blind, the better his paintings uh, came actually. They became very turnaround in the in the application. So um, um, <clears throat> not that I'm going blind or anything like that in, in that sense, but I I'm able to see nature and and landscapes and for them to reveal a message to me which I'm able to translate onto canvas. So how do you react to that? <laughs> Is that a Q&A? <laughs> well, if we can rehearse this, of course. <laughs> I think for me, it's, uh, I spend a lot of time certainly travelling around the various landscapes and I, I do a visual recording of them and I expect sort of everybody does that, perhaps they don't. So for me, it's about the application of those forms <coughs> and colour and trying to explore and take away a lot of the, if you like, the built form in many respects. And so you see there's probably not very much built form drawn in any of our works here. And that's, that's a cue in itself, I think, because we're looking to really understand what, what is the nature of the landscape before humanity has touched it in that sense and, and to really explore what, that, what it feels like and what it means to be in that particular landscape. Uh, as architects, we contemplate this a lot. We have a saying within our office is to try and do more with less, and I, I think we do that in a lot of our work, and to pursue a simplicity. And I think a lot of that comes through in this body of work as well, too, is that there's a sort of a rationale and honesty that sits around us here that, that sort of invades our architecture in a nice way, I would hope. Discuss, dot, dot. <laughs> no, that's an architect. Architecture is getting consumed by artificial intelligence. And I've noticed in the people, you know, in our office, for instance, that AI um, is becoming an obsession almost in the way in which the problem solving in production of architecture, and uh, that's revealed in the monotony of our environment, unfortunately, that it, it looks like it's been done by AI, AI, and in fact it has been done by AI to a certain degree. And therefore it is very, very important for artists the architect to be an artist at the same time so that they can view and to see the real meaning of what they're trying to do, their response to the landscape, where they're putting buildings, the feeling of buildings and all the rest of it. Without that creativity, AI will just be 
a series of algorithms that will be by anybody, they'll be totally anonymous, they'll be unidentified. AI will take over painting as well. I'm sure that AI can do better paintings than most of us, but it is the uniqueness of experience and the uniqueness of perceiving what you what the outside environment is all about that's terribly important that makes the importance of creativity within the architectural scene and for art in general. And I think to add to that as well too, one of the layers that perhaps you're seeing in this work or our thought process <coughs> is that of time. And certainly know as an architect and an emerging artist is that there's a lot of repetition that you'll see in this work here. And there's probably no mistake in that because then it's about the changing nature of is it morning, is it evening, is it afternoon, you know, what are the weather conditions. And for me, I just find that that is the most fascinating door that opens that gives you this opportunity of colour and materiality in both the work that an architect would pursue, but then also the work of the, the painter. Anything you add to that, or are we done? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, um, Philip and, um, and David, for a very interesting and informative and also impromptu conversation. So put your hand together for Philip and David. So, Obviously, they don't need to earn income from the art, but I think to show appreciation of what they do, it would be great if you everyone advise my work because you know, <laughs> it just shows appreciation of what they do. And uh, also, David has actually published a few books. One of them is here with us, Drawing Paris. It's a really fantastic book. So um, if you like Paris, you will love David's drawing. So they are very, very... Um, uh, accessible, twenty five dollars each. If anyone wants to buy one, just just let me know, and we can actually get data to sign it. <laughs> so again, put your hand together for good.